commenced and is in steady progress. We are confident that this process will be completed within the stipulated timelines or even before that, post which we will move forward with the next steps as mandated by the law. While our CFO Rohit Gupta will take you through the granular detail of the financial and operational performance of the company, let me give you an overview of the business environment. The second quarter has been one of recovery and revival for us and the industry at large. The second wave of the pandemic had a sudden surge in cases, served as a disruption to the growth momentum in the previous quarter, and some effects of that also spilled over into the first half of the second quarter. But we are glad to note that the increase in vaccination drives and reduction of cases have led to gradual reopening of business activities across the country. This has provided an impetus to the consumer and to the overall advertiser sentiment, resulting in green shoots for macroeconomic growth. Amidst this scenario, the underlying trends seen in the content consumption during the lockdown remain at the fore. To elaborate on that further, viewership on TV and digital video streaming platforms continue to record new levels of growth. Furthermore, the launch of high-impact entertainment properties and engaging films across platforms has encouraged advertisers to increase their strengths across genres. As per our plans highlighted in the previous quarter, we launched 30-plus shows across our channel, leading to a gradual recovery of viewership in certain markets where we had lost share. On Z5, our new strategy continues to bear fruit as we remain in the growth mode for the business. Noteworthy efforts have been taken to improve the digital platform growth across key aspects like content and user experience, which have led to higher user acquisition and monetization. Globally, the platform continues to post steady positive growth across markets, including the United States, where we launched in the previous quarter. We continue to invest in our core businesses to further ramp up our offerings to create compelling entertainment for our viewers across the globe. The impasse around subscription revenue on the linear side of the business continued during the quarter, leading to a marginal decline. That said, we had announced our channel pricing in October in line with NTO 2.0, but I would like to inform you that in the latest communication that the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India has allowed broadcasters time to 31st December 2021 to revise and publish the RIOs. The revised implementation date is now 1st April 2022. Like I have maintained earlier as well, after the initial few quarters of disruption post implementation, we will be back to delivering healthy growth in subscription numbers. Overall, with the receding fear of an anticipated third wave, the green shoots in demand are clearly visible. The reopening of malls, theaters, and other economic and leisure activities, coupled with the festival season, will certainly see advertisement spends bouncing back in the subsequent quarters. We are hopeful of a gradual recovery in theater occupancy, and with the slate of films lined up for release from these studios, it will further serve as a positive factor for us in the subsequent quarters. We remain optimistic that if this trend continues, advertising should surpass the pre-COVID levels and swing into healthy growth mode. Post the impact of COVID in the initial part of the quarter, the creation and availability of original content along with a relentless execution across the business, has led to revenue and EBITDA growth sequentially and on a year-on-year -year basis. We expect this robust growth and performance to continue in the coming quarters. Overall, there are very clear indicators pointing towards the sharp recovery for the economy and industry at large. I remain confident that the improved business sentiments will provide a strong growth momentum for the sector helping businesses bounce back to pre-COVID levels by the end of this fiscal. On that note, I would like to hand over the session to Rohit to take you through the financial and operational performance of the company, and I look forward to interacting with you during the Q&A session. Thank you. Over to you, Rohit. Thank you, Puneet. Hope all of you are doing well and taking <clears throat> good care of yourself. The second wave of COVID took us by surprise in the first quarter on this financial year when things were starting to normalize. We continue to see the residual impact of the same in the first half of the quarter as well. As number of cases came down sharply, 
and the pace of vaccination drive accelerated across the country. We saw strong bounce back from advertisers in second half of the quarter. The accelerated progress in the pace of vaccination, release of pent up demand in the festival season provides much needed upside to grow revenue. During the quarter, we continue to be India's strong number two TV entertainment network. The viewership share for the quarter increased by 70 BPS to 17.7%. This increase was on account of 30 plus new launches across the market. These new launches helped us increase share across key slots. While the performance in markets like Bangla, Telugu, Kannad, Uriya continues to be strong during the quarter, in Hindi, Tamil, and Marathi markets, our share should improve further based on compelling new launches planned in quarter three. We will continue to launch new shows across the market to drive share gains. New channels now contribute about 1.2% of the total network share. Z5 strategy outlined in previous quarters is well on track, and we have started seeing robust growth in operating as well as financial metrics. Global MEUs and DAUs as on September 30th stands at 93.2 million and 9.3 million respectively, with watch time of 186 minutes. During the quarter, we launched 13 originals across languages. We have a compelling slate of content lined up in H2. Revenue for Z5 during the quarter grew sequentially by 17% to Rs. 1305 million. EBITDA losses for the quarter stand at Rs. 1720 million. Z Studios during the quarter released five movies, including theatrical release of three movies. We saw encouraging response for theatrical releases in the states where we were allowed to release, with most state governments gradually lifting the restrictions on theater opening, we remain confident of stronger performance in H2 with strong pipeline of movies. Now coming to the financial performance for the quarter, we have witnessed healthy recovery in ad revenues towards second half of this quarter. Ad revenues for the quarter grew by 17.6% sequentially and 20.7% Y and Y. As revenues for H1 stand at 2159 million, up 52.3% on a Y and Y basis. <clears throat> Subscription revenue for the quarter stand at Rs. 7885 million, marginally down on Y and Y basis. Overall revenues came at Rs. 19788 million, grew 14.9% year on year. Some solid revenues for H1 FY22 stand at Rs. 37.538 million, up 23.7% on a Y on Y basis. The EBITDA for the quarter came at Rs. 4121 million, with a margin of 20.8% on the back of higher ad sales. EBITDA for H1 FY22 came at Rs. 7562 million, with a margin of 20.1%. Tax for Q2 came at Rs. 266 million, up 27.4% Q on Q and 185% Y on Y. Tax for H1 stands at Rs. 4749 million, up Rs. 3524 million from H1 FY21. The cash and treasury investments of the company as of September 21 for Rs. 16.2 billion, post payment of equity dividend of Rs. 2.4 billion. The cash and treasury investments include bank transfers of Rs. 7. Uh, include bank balance of Rs. 7.8 billion, fixed deposits of Rs. 3.4 billion, mutual fund investments of Rs. 4.5 billion, and NCDs worth 438 million. Over to you, Anshu. Thank you, Rohit. Uh, Stefan, we can now begin the Q&A round. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of novel from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on uh, ad revenues. If I look at uh, uh, performance of your peers, uh, that seems to be better off as compared to yours. Uh, if I look at on two years CAGR basis, uh, would you attribute that weakness only to market share loss, uh, or uh, the yields have corrected significantly? Uh, you know, on account of again the same reason, or I am missing something over here. So that is my first question. Very good. Yeah. So, so uh, now I think, uh, uh, like I said, you know, uh, we have seen uh, we have seen ad revenues bouncing back in later half of this quarter, and advertisers have started spending for growth. Uh, we expect that you know this growth will continue, and uh, you know while there has been um, there was softness in market share, uh, you know, in some of the channels, like I already mentioned in my opening commentary. We have taken uh, steps to, you know, uh, uh, to correct that. And uh, what we are now expecting is with this festive season coming in, uh, we should see bounce back in ad revenues in H2. Okay. And uh, one point I missed out what uh, Puneet stated that uh, ad revenues will be at pre-COVID level. Uh, were you talking about industry or uh, Z specifically? And, and what would be the timeline for that? I was referring so, to H2 for and for Z, both will be uh, uh, in line with the pre-COVID levels uh, numbers. Okay. And uh, uh, lastly, on uh, Z5, uh, now can you uh, give uh, some guidance on uh, number of show launches? Because uh, uh, although uh, now production uh, uh, is uh, you know kind of back to normalized level, and you have launched 13 shows in two Q. So, what is the uh, number uh, or pipeline for H2 for this year? Bro, uh, do you have the numbers? Uh, uh, no, we have a very healthy slate uh, uh, number for H2. Actually, uh, the number in H2 will be higher than uh, than H1. And uh, you know, because of COVID, some of the some of the uh, originals got uh, pushed to H2. Uh, uh, so. Uh, the number will be will be more than uh, 13, and um, it'll be about 17 to 18 uh, per quarter basis. You are saying uh, in H2? Yeah, in Q3. Yeah. Understood. Uh, thank you, and all the best. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question, may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Avnish Roy. From Edelweiss, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my first question is on your movie production business. So uh, we are seeing very good pent up demand, uh, for example, Suryavanshi and in South India also Avante. So I want to understand uh, pipeline of movies, potential for Z studios next few quarters, if you could discuss, because now things are uh, almost normalizing and capacity constraints are also going away. And uh, one of the other uh, listed uh, South Indian broadcaster has prioritized clearly uh, the movie production over the OTT. Would you also, if given a choice, would you also prioritize movie production in the near term, medium term over the OTT content? I do understand a general answer that both are important, but given a choice and uh, will there be slight inclination to tap more uh, the movie production side? Yeah, I wish, uh... Thanks for the question. So first and foremost, we have a very healthy pipeline of film releases lined up uh, in the H2 of this year. Uh, this includes uh, a very healthy skew towards the regional languages. And when I say regional languages, I mean uh, covering uh, both the northern region as, as well as the southern regions. And also the slate uh, is uh, from uh, A-plus movies down to even uh, mid-size uh, uh, low-budget films. Uh, we do expect that it will be very healthy returns for us in the coming uh, H2 from the Z Studios business. On your second point, on reprioritizing our, our business towards the studio model at, at the cost of Z5, no, we are not going to do anything like that. We are focused very much on Z5. That remains our topmost priority as a company, uh, and we will continue to uh, focus on that. 
the restudios business is an independent plan and we believe that both will uh, coexist and restudios is a very critical strategy in the success of v5 and the linear business and therefore these are very complementary to each other rather than against each other sure one follow up on uh, z5 so z5 revenues finally good pick up quarter on quarter it has been uh, it had been stagnant in that broadly 95 to 110 crore revenue uh, it's a good uh, scale up uh, in spite of cutting the prices so my question here is essentially uh, what is go- going right here uh, do you see this kind of a quarter on quarter scale up further every quarter so normally uh, e-commerce uh, startups or digital startups are seen like that so that's uh, one bit second now with so much of confidence and so much of aggression on sony z merger won't ott uh, see some backseat given ultimately to ott apps for sony z won't make much sense so is there any dilution in aggression towards z5 because of the impending merger well abish until the merger doesn't happen things remain as it is so life is normal there is no change in thinking we will continue our aggression on z5 as it is uh in terms of uh, uh, uh can you repeat the first part that you were yeah, quarter on quarter quarter on quarter scale up of revenue in z5 is good it's uh, it has finally broken out but can we look at uh, this kind of a quarter on quarter scale up uh, going ahead or is it more now likely to now remain stable at that 130 135 crore uh, revenue quarterly certainly not abish so you will see scale up of revenue quarter on quarter i can't comment from one quarter to another comment quarter but certainly on a on a uh, ongoing basis you see the revenue of z5 growing leaps and bounds sure and last question uh, so good to see some market share improvement but still it is uh, well below your uh, uh, past averages so if you could discuss with the new content some of the uh, good things uh, which has worked in your three laggard channels and normally z grows faster than industry if your uh, flagship channels etc have seen some market share erosion currently are you seeing some uh, growth slower than the industry growth rate in terms of advertising ab this laggard to mat bolo yaar abhi theek hai every child goes through some problem that is at its yeah, but it's a flagship channel it's a flagship channel so it's it becomes very important yes it does i understand that so it's a child that is having some problems and we are fixing those problems and i am quite certain in the coming quarter itself you'll see that rebound happening on the flagship channel and the other channels as well so and as you rightly said we will endeavor to grow faster than the industry normally does so the turnaround will be as usual in the z style uh, but certainly first we have to get the content right you must have already seen the kind of content lineup we are bringing including saregampa and so the other key properties that we have lined up for not just hindi but even for the regional languages so i am pretty confident that in the coming quarter or quarter 3 and quarter 4 you'll see a significant improvement and one last follow up on advertising so currently every sector is seeing either a 10 year high or a 40 year high in terms of cost inflation and fmcg is 55% of uh, your advertising which is seeing a very very high gross margin pressure so i am sure some sectors will revive because of the normalcy in life coming back but if 55 70% say of your sector is going to if your advertising is going to see gross margin pressure what is the uh, feedback you are getting from your advertiser next uh, two three quarters because it's looking very tough on the advertising sentiments well at the end of the day it's a matter of share of voice right i mean if if one sector or one advertiser from that sector Uh, goes after share of voice others will have to follow uh, but i don't want to double guess their business strategies etc as of now we have no indications that they're going to be pulling back uh, we are getting all the indications that uh, they do want to come back uh, spending uh, to the pre covid levels if not higher than that okay okay that's all from my side thanks and all the best thank you thank you A reminder to the participants: Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Arun Prasad from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question is on first on uh, uh, advertisement spends, the ANP spends, uh, and the P&L. It is it is substantially higher as compared to 
base quarter or even sequentially any any one of in this you you did mention that uh, in the presentation that it's uh, mainly on investments on three pay but can you give more color on this whether it will remain at this level or is it some kind of an on off uh, only in this quarter no i don't so uh, if you look at the earnings uh, release we have had almost 38 launches on the linear side and about 30 to the 5 side uh at this pace uh, of lot and we will pay for at least another quarter or two so you will see higher amp spends happening uh for the company uh in this uh, financial year and then you will start seeing stabilization happening to that so this is directly in correlation with the content strategy and launch strategy of the content across various geographies and languages so so this will remain at this level even though the revenue has been caught up with the pre covid levels or is it is it the uh, effort to bring the revenue up to the pre covid levels uh, how how should we look at it actually because the revenue has been kept pace with the top line has been kept pace with with uh, with the uh, ad spends or generally in our business uh, the revenue has a lag to the content and the things delivery uh because we are dealing on 30 week cycles with the advertisers and the agencies so that's the general lag that we see uh rohit also talked about that we have a strong lineup of content to be launched in quarter 3 both on the linear side and quarter 4 on the digital side so that will is going to take a lot of amp spend and we are certain that as and when the content uh, performs and it will perform the revenue lag will go away and you will start seeing the revenue tracking a similar trend of course but that every quarter is going to see 30 to 40 launches going forward forever so therefore there should be some stability in the next financial year as i said a second question is on uh, z5 uh, there is an addition of 2 million uh, dau daily activities uh, sequentially uh, how much of this of this is influenced by the us business launch any 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 little more details on that or can we expect similar uh, net ads uh, quarter on quarter sequentially from here onwards no i don't think we should be predicting uh, net ads and stuff like that on a quarter on quarter basis it will be too premature for us to start giving that kind of a guidance our endeavor will be to continuously grow the business uh, united states as you will agree of that 9.3 million will be a fraction now uh, because eventually the 93 million also a large part of that or a significant part of that comes from india uh, the population outside the country is what it is we all know what that number is so uh, therefore the number is predominantly indian driven okay okay so so what what exactly went right uh, during this quarter or uh, to result in this as we see the 1 percentage sequentially it has grown uh, even the mau numbers have gone very well so uh can you just throw some color what exactly went right this time as i said in my opening remarks two things that we've been working on the strategy was on focusing on the platform which is the user experience and user interface and the content lineup both have worked well for us for us to have delivered these kind of numbers and this growth is not just in this quarter uh, if you look at we have been around we have been growing sequentially over the last three four quarters uh consistently both on mus and the dus yeah okay so uh, fair enough thanks and all the best thank you thank you a reminder to the participants anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time there's a link in box The next question is from the line of Jinesh Joshi from Prabodhas Leeladhar. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so the revised uh, tariffs uh, that we have announced in order to comply with uh, NTO 2.0. Uh, I mean, uh, do you think the hike taken is sufficient uh, to kind of recoup the loss of revenue that can come from uh, uh weaker demand of uh, bookies as most popular channels will uh, now be sold a la carte well certainly mr joshi we have taken all that into account before deciding our pricing and 
so in our uh, uh, experience and wisdom that is it should work uh, to to offset any revenue shortfall that we may have but uh, time will tell once we go to the market with it as to whether we are right or wrong but in our wisdom and in our experience this should be something that will work Uh, can you share what is the current uh, revenue mix in terms of uh, bouquet and ala carte? Oh, sorry, Rohit. I don't think we'll have that uh, immediately. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I can take uh, this with you one on one. I don't have that number of time. Oh, one last bit from my side. Uh, I think we are also planning to launch quite a bit of new shows in PQ. Uh, in this quarter, you highlighted we have launched thirty plus new shows. So any uh, number you have in mind which you would want to share uh, for uh, the upcoming quarter? I think for the upcoming quarter the number would be the same range. Uh, so it will be about maybe twenty eight to thirty shows across languages. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. uh yeah hi good evening uh so uh, a few few questions here so first of all uh, uh, you know on the subscription side now international subscription since now you know the ott launches is there pretty much uh, uh we're still in a ramp up mode but at least the initiative is there to be uh, on a on a global basis uh what are your thoughts on the international subscription revenue uh, do you think this will make make largely transfer to v5 uh Uh, your thoughts there, please. Well, the market to market will differ, Uncle. It is not uh, one one glove fits all. So, for example, in United States, we have taken a conscious decision that uh, we we have gotten off the largest uh, linear platform and focusing purely on Z5. So there, certainly, the, uh, the, our endeavor will be to move towards the Z5 strategy. the other markets we have a complementary strategy of continuing the linear distribution as well as uh the digital uh, business so we will play this out market by market and it's not something that is an overnight switch on or switch off so it will be done uh, uh, sequentially market by market as the operating team sees as the best strategy to go forward sure and just to follow up there uh, from a pricing perspective uh going directly to ott will be value related to you uh, with respect to the specific market versus what you are getting right now through the distribution network channel sorry i i couldn't hear you were a bit when going directly would be so uh, my question was that going directly in the international market uh, through the ott route uh, let's say in us uh, versus the the distribution model right now will this be more value related to you on a you know yield per user basis yes in the short term it will actually be uh, value diluted because you will lose the base that you were being you were enjoying being paid by the b2b platform but eventually we expect that uh, the yield will be much higher and much better for us going forward because it's a direct customer that we own uh, rather than owning through a b2b platform sure okay and uh, uh, secondly on the advertisement side now uh, while we are still down on a on a two year cagr basis uh, how far have we reached in terms of recouping the ad yield correction uh, that had happened you know over the last maybe couple of quarters good so like i said you know uh, uh, <clears throat> we are clearly seeing ad revenues coming back in the second half of this quarter and uh, we are also working like on the ad yield as well and um, you know h2 of this year uh, we should see you know growth both over fy20 levels of h2 and fy21 levels of h2 Sure, and and Rohit, if you can uh, maybe highlight on the yield basis, uh, uh, you know, on or let's say in currently, uh, maybe in the festive season, have we uh, from a volume use perspective, are we more or less fully utilized across the network? Yes, uh, uh, we are. Uh, uh, we are, uh, you know, fully utilized across the network, and uh, you know, even on like I said, on yield basis, you know, uh, we are working on uh, on the yield uh, with our advertisers, so that is improving as well. Okay, 
that's it for me. That's it from my side. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raghav Vaghera from Philip Morris International. Please go ahead. Mr. Vagela, your line is in talk mode. Kindly go ahead with your question, please. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Kunal Vora from BNP Pariva. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, can you share uh, thoughts on subscription revenue growth in FY23 once uh, NTO2 gets uh, fully implemented? How are you thinking about FY23? So I'll go down that the, uh, sorry, Kunal, uh, now that the implementation itself is postponed to 1st April 2022, uh, it's still early to predict what 23 will look like. Because we, until we go to the market with the plan, we will not know the outcome. But I still believe that we, they will see some disruption in the maybe a quarter or two, and then things should stabilize and growth should come back. And I've always maintained that post the disruption, the growth will be back to the high single digit kind of number for the industry. Sure, okay. Next one on, uh, if you have thoughts on margins going forward, uh, when are you looking to get back to 25% and whether getting back to 30%, which was the earlier target, and that's realistic in the medium term, or uh, we are looking to like, say, maybe get back to 25, but 30 seems difficult now. Well, step by step, could also 25 is the first step for us to get to, but we'll be able to guide you better at the end of next quarter. Uh, once we have seen the full color of the advertising coming back in or not. So give us, give us one more quarter and we'll come back to you with our guidance uh, on that, uh, when we talk next quarter in January. Sure. And lastly, if you can update us, uh, any incremental like uh, in the details on the Sony deal, any hurdles you expect from your larger shareholder, any possibility of an early closure, and whether there could be any need for any change in terms, if you can uh, any, provide any incremental insights on the Sony deal. Nothing I can share, Kunal. If you missed my remarks, I can only said that after the principal approval from the board, the due diligence has commenced. It's, it's uh, proceeding very well on track. We are very confident of getting it closed well within the timeline, if not before that, uh, of the stipulated timeline. So we are working diligently on that. Uh, we'll come back to you with more details once we have that. Are you seeing any legal roadblocks or uh, like the path seems clear, uh, like assuming that the two shareholders agree to the terms? Yeah, as long as shareholders agree to the terms, then the path is very clear. Why right? there should be any legal hurdles? Okay. okay. Uh, as far as the other shareholders go, they will have a time to vote for it. Understood. Okay. 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 Well, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Kunal. Mr. Vora, you have any more questions? No, that's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anshul Jain for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, everyone, for your interest in the company. Should you have any further queries, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Z Entertainment Enterprises Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.